Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're gonna be a craftier person after watching this video. Are these circumstances extenuating enough for you? I'm the warranty head for a retailer dealing in large machinery. The vendor sells to us, we sell to the customer, then I deal with any warranty claims on behalf of the customer. We also sell attachments for the large machinery, like grapples and hammers, which have their own warranty terms. We purchased a set of grapples in 2017 and kept them in stock until finally installing them onto a machine that we sold last month. Immediately they started having issues. No problem. We went in and replaced the $1700 part that had failed. I submitted the claim to the grapple company. Unfortunately, the grapple company just got bought out by a different vendor who is playing hardball and my claim is denied. Technically, the grapple company only warranties their parts for one year from the ship date, not the install date. We keep a large stock count of their grapples as part of an unwritten agreement between our companies. The former owner was a personal friend of the company's owner. Maintaining our own stock makes inventory easier for both of us, rather than having to place a rush order for each machine we sell. We make up a large portion of their yearly sales. I resubmit the claim requesting a goodwill compensation and was denied again. I resubmitted a third time detailing the understanding we had with the previous owners. The new warranty guy on their side sent me this response. Grapple company understands the situation, but we aren't able to help. Our warranty guidelines are clear that no warranty will be considered if the terms have expired outside of extenuating circumstances, and we require all retailers to follow those terms to the letter. If there are extenuating circumstances to this claim, please advise. Fine. $1700 is not a truly significant amount of money, but this lack of warranty issue does promise to become much bigger as time passes and could make it non-profitable to carry their brand. I make a recommendation to the head of sales and it gives me authorization to throw my weight around. I email them back saying, We appreciate you must follow warranty guidelines as written. We consider the extenuating circumstances to be the continued relationship between our two companies. If you disagree, we must also begin following our guidelines to the letter. Per our terms from this document, we will be returning all items approaching the year mark for full credit. We will not be continuing to keep advanced stock. As Grapple Company has had significant issues in the past handling JIT inventory requests, we will also be looking elsewhere for a supplier. Please advise your staff to expect the first return shipment by the end of the week. Thank you for your time. Surprise, surprise. The vendor's new president came rushing down to visit us personally and unruffle feathers. He, my head of sales and I, sat down and hashed out a written agreement for new warranty terms to reflect our stocking understanding and continuing good relationship. I got my measly $700 credit and, more importantly, what amounts to a carte blanche on all future claims. Their warranty adjuster has been instructed to handle us with kid gloves. Let my blood run just to prove a point about the new dress code. TLDR at the bottom. Okay, I've worked in a lot of different industries, but this happened while I worked in a casino chain in the UK. At 19, I was a bartender and shifts would usually be 12 hours at a time. While I worked there, the dress code was smart black, so smart trousers and black shirts, which men and women had to wear because it was comfortable. To get more tips, even though I was classified as a bartender, the company forced the women to work on the casino floor making us walk in circles around the gambling tables and made the men stay behind the bar. The women were not allowed to stand still, so even on a quiet day, we still had to walk in circles. This was made easier with our uniforms being comfortable. Although it was frustrating to walk around for hours on end, the pay was good, so we complied. Then the company held a meeting and told us how they decided to change the uniforms. Unsurprisingly, the guys' uniforms didn't change at all, but the women were told to wear tight grey dresses you could barely move in and a high heels by the next shift. It was clearly to look more appealing and get more tips. Of course, my female co-workers and I were pissed off about this and told the managers that we will not only have restricted movement, but will also be in pain by the end of the night if we have to walk around for hours on high heels on the hard floor. Management didn't care and told us to suck it up. After this, we all gathered in the changing rooms and talked about how there is no way we're wearing this new uniform and shouldn't wear it in protest. That's when I had an idea. I suggested that my co-workers do what they have planned and I will wear the new uniform because we needed to prove our point. After a long discussion and hesitation, they agreed and let me do it. The next shift I walked in the building in the new uniform. My god it was uncomfortable. The dress made it difficult to turn my body round and bending over was near impossible. It was so tight that when I did kneel down I was scared it would rip. Management were really happy to see that I complied, even saying to my co-workers how they should learn from me. I had to keep it cool while they said that as I was already starting to get sore from the heels. It was a busy night and I was running around like a headless chicken. 
The dress made it difficult to keep up the pace as I struggled to breathe properly. I think the dress was not designed for this kind of movement, and the pain from my shoes increased to the point that at times I had to attempt to crouch for a second in the back to give my feet a rest. My co-worker started begging me to stop and just get flat shoes for my own sake, but I declined, stating how I needed to prove our point, so I pushed on through the pain till the end of the shift. Management came in when we all finished to see how everyone was and asking me how I found the shift. I smiled and said it was great, with one small problem. I removed my shoes for the first time in 12 hours and stood in front of my managers mildly shaking. Their faces went from all smiles to shock when they looked at my feet to see the blood running on the floor from the open wounds on my heels. The injuries covered the entirety of my heels with dry blood on the back of my shoes. They started telling me I should not have done that and should have worn flat shoes, but I reminded them saying, but as part of the new dress code, I had to wear high heels like you told me. As the injuries were exposed, I started to feel the pain intensify and had to hold back tears, but my shaking got worse. They made me sit down and got the first aid kit for my feet as I started to unzip the back of my dress saying how hard it is to breathe. The dresses were still compulsory, but the dresses were made looser and we never had to wear high heels on that shift again. Damn, even thinking about wearing high heels for that long is making my feet hurt. That's absolutely ridiculous. I can't work while being clocked out? Okay, fine with me. Before I start, there are a couple things I'd like to say before getting into it. The first is that I do not want this situation to paint my old job in a negative light. It was a great place to work, and I only had to leave due to circumstances mostly unrelated to this. I miss working there, even though I'm in a better situation now. The second is that there is some background information I have to explain as I was in an unorthodox position. I used to work at a private school doing a few different part-time jobs under different departments. I was athletic director, AD, long-term substitute and also gym leader, which basically meant that I watched the gym in the evenings for residential students during the week. We were a statewide school, so about a third of the students stayed on campus as either they lived too far away to take the bus every day or just needed extra assistance before and after school hours. My first year I was just the gym leader while subbing every now and then, but my second year is when they offered me the long-term sub gig and the AD job. This is when the malicious compliance started. The summer before my second year, HR offered me the sub job and AD job, and we discussed the logistics. Basically, I was still considered part-time, and because these positions were under three different departments, I would clock in and out depending on the job. Subbing was under education, AD was under athletics, and gym leader was under recreation. HR and I agreed that my day would basically go like this. Clock in from 8am to 3pm for subbing, clock in from 3pm to 5pm for AD, and then clock in from 5.30pm to 8pm for gym leader. This happened Monday through Thursday, and Friday I would just sub and go home at 3. A week into the school year, I get an email from the person in charge of payroll saying I had to clock out from 11.30am to 12pm for lunch and could no longer clock in from 3 to 5 as AD. I responded by saying I understood about lunch, but why did I need to clock out for the AD work? That time was best for me to do everything for that job. They said that usually the AD was a stipend position for full-time positions, but when HR decided that I could clock in, they thought it would even out to the usual stipend. However, once payroll started checking my timesheet, they realized it would actually be a little more than the usual stipend, and that I had to go back to the stipend, which I would get at the end of the school year. I thought this was unfair, as I discussed with HR the logistics, and it was an oversight on their part, and now I was going to basically lose 16 hours of pay a week. Being part-time, I couldn't afford to wait until the end of the year to get that money. When HR got involved, they immediately sided with payroll. I was no longer allowed to clock in as AD. All this happened through email. Before I accepted defeat, I asked when I was supposed to do my AD work now. They said, well, I could do that while I was on the clock, but I shouldn't work if not clocked in. Okay, then. The following week, I would clock out for lunch from 11.30 to 12 and no longer clock in from 3 to 5. However, I would also not do any work related to my jobs during this time. If people asked me to discuss anything, I would specifically say not during those times. I would also purposely relax during these times. I would watch YouTube, eat my lunch or snack, and sometimes just walk around campus doing nothing. Anytime someone asked me to do something, I would just say when I clock back in, I'll get on it. This meant any emails or phone calls, I would ignore until I clocked back in. Being AD, I had to meet with coaches about students' eligibility, interview for a new coach, put in order forms for equipment, and also arrange for home meets and tournaments. The best time for teachers who coached to do this was when school ended at 3, but guess what, I wasn't available and I had emails to prove it. After this week of everyone basically revolving around my schedule, enough people complained to HR and payroll that we came to a compromise. I still clocked out from 11.30 to 12 for lunch, 
who was allowed to clock back in from 3 to 5 as AD. They had to lower my hourly wage for those hours so it matched the stipend, but it was still enough for me, and I didn't have to wait until the end of the year. Also, I could now arrange meetings and interviews that worked for everyone. I still watch YouTube during my lunch break though. I don't know about that one. Something feels super fishy and illegal about how they're managing that schedule. OP is literally describing themselves as part-time while working 12 hours a day. You know, something doesn't quite add up. Okay, so that's all for r slash malicious compliance. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, and any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.